legs crossed or on your knees. Just find a, a comfortable way to sit so that the knees and the feet, the legs root down. You can feel the sitting bones are heavy. And from that groundedness, start to lift up, lengthen the ribs and the crown of the head towards the ceiling. And as you do that, move the head of your arm bones back and down. So the collarbones are nice and wide. And bring the index finger and thumb together. This is called Yana Mudra, and you can place the palms face down on your knees in that mudra. The index finger symbolizes the, the ego, our um, individual self, and the thumb symbolizes the universal self. So you're drawing the ego underneath the universal intelligence. So joining these two things together, you bring yourself into the wholeness of everything. Allow your eyes to close. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, sigh. Two more like that. Inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, make some noise, audible exhale. And inhale, draw in this fresh oxygen, filling up, find the top of the container. And then open the mouth, release anything you don't need. Let it go. Close the lips and find Ujjayi Pranayam. So breathing in through the nose. Lips are sealed like the sound of a ha as you sigh through the nose. So it's an audible inhale and exhale. Ocean sounding breath. And your mind can just get really fascinated with the sensation of your own breathing. Becoming very present to what's there, right here, right now. Your breath is happening in this moment. You can open your eyes for a moment and bring the right hand into Yana Mudra. So we'll draw the um, index finger and ring finger in. So you have your thumb and, um, sorry, index finger and middle finger. So you have your thumb and ring finger exposed. And we'll do Nadi Shodhana. So start by covering the right nostril with your thumb. Take a deep, well actually let's start by taking a deep breath in with both nostrils clear. Exhale, empty out all the air. And then we'll close off the right nostril, inhale. Switch, close off the left nostril, exhale out the right. And we'll just continue like that, inhaling through the right. Switch, exhale to the left. So alternate nostril breathing. Inhale and you switch. Starting to lengthen the breath and exhaling. Inhaling. At the top of the inhale, there might be a little pause as you switch to the other side and slowly exhaling. See if you can find the bottom of the exhale totally empty before breathing in again. And switching to the other side. So we're doing this cross channel breathing. And it's connected to our nervous system. Every time you inhale through the right nostril, it's feeding the left hemisphere of the brain. And every time you inhale into the left nostril, it's feeding the right hemisphere of the brain. So balancing these two different parts of yourself. The yin and the yang, masculine, feminine, solar, lunar intellectual, creative. And the next time that you exhale out of the left nostril, no rush, just complete the cycle. Allow your right hand 
to come down towards your knees and return to your natural breathing. And just notice what that feels like. The natural rhythm of the breath without being controlled, just flowing in and out of your body. And following the breath is our ability to connect to grace, this current of grace that's always flowing through life. Just becoming a little bit more aware that it's there. Drawing palms together in front of your heart. And sit up a little taller with the heart towards your thumbs. We'll open our practice to the universal vibration, the sound of Aum. Start by taking a deep breath in. Open the mouth and sigh. And then inhale for Aum. And opening the eyes, releasing the hands down. Just remove anything that you're sitting on, place it to the side. And stretch your legs out in front of you. And start to circle the ankles a few times. Change directions, go the other way. Okay, we're going to start to open up the shoulders and the chest here. So you can bring your feet a little closer together. And start to walk your hands back behind you. Draw the head of the shoulder bones back. And open up through the chest. And keep the back of the neck long. Take a nice deep breath into the front of the chest. So into the upper lungs, top of the rib cage, and feel your biceps externally rotating. So turning the upper arm bone out, that's gonna move the stretch more into the arms. And with anything that we're doing today, you wanna find that place that hurts just right. You don't wanna go too far, and then go deeper if it, if it hurts in a bad way, in the joints, in the tendons. So you can always ease out and do a little bit less, right? With this slow, steady of opening, you can't rush it. And sometimes one day it's going to be a little more open, sometimes a little more tight. So just be where you are. If there's anyone that wants to go a little bit further, you can move your hips a little bit further forward. Or you can come up onto the fingertips, move your fingers a little further back. Right. Or if that's a little too much, you can come out of it. And then we'll take three more deep breaths here, ujjayi breathing. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. And slowly coming back up. Nice, coming up to sit. Okay, you're gonna bend your knees and just let the knees fall over to the right side. And I'll just face the camera so you're kind of coming into this mermaid position. Um, I have my left shin resting on the right foot. And we're gonna take a twist to the right. So you're gonna place the right hand behind you. You can either bring left hand to left knee or it can cross over to the right knee. And you wanna use that back hand as a way to grow taller. All of our twisting comes from a long spine. So lift up the ribs and the head, breathe in. And then with spaciousness, then you move into perhaps a little deeper twisting, rotating the shoulders, turning the head and the eyes, breathing in. And out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. 
Inhale. Exhale, three. Unwind your twist. Come back to center. We'll just take it over to the other side. So nice and easy with the knees up and over. Set it up in your hips so you're elevated on your uh, left sitting bone. Right? You can sit up really tall here. And from lengthening your spine, you can bring the left hand behind you and start to rotate. There has to be a sense of groundedness in order to lengthen. So pressing down through the lower part of the body, the sitting bones and the hips, so you can lift the torso, the head, breathing in to grow taller. And then with that freedom of space, as you exhale, gently twisting. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Slowly come back to center. And then we'll place the feet on the floor, come into a cross-legged position. You can sit Indian style or uh, Sukhasana, easy pose. If you are very tight in your hips or lower back, you can always sit on a, on a folded blanket, take maybe a little lift. Bring the fingertips to the tops of your shoulders. And we're gonna bring the elbows together as if they're kissing each other. And as you do this, you're really rounding the upper back. So I'm spreading the shoulder blades, open up the back body here. And you can look in towards your belly button to add to that curve in the spine. And begin to, keeping the elbows kissing together, lift them up towards the ceiling. Lift the elbows all the way up, breathe in. And then circle the elbows back behind you. This time you're squeezing the shoulder blades together. So you're opening up the front body. And then exhale. Slowly down, inhale, squeeze the elbows together, open up through the back body, reach the elbows all the way up towards the ceiling, and then squeeze the shoulder blades together as the elbows reach back behind you. We'll do one more like that. Inhale, the elbows come together and up. Exhale, the elbows go back and down. Okay, and then just bring the fingertips behind you here. So you're sitting up really tall. Inhale, reach the arms up. Take um, right fingertips to right shoulder. And you're gonna take the left elbow to the right knee. And we're gonna start to circle this right elbow. So dip the right elbow down and forward and take it up. Now you're squeezing the shoulder blades together and back. A few like that. And inhale as it comes forward and up. Exhale back and down. One more. Inhaling. Fusing movement and breath together. Great. Let's reach both arms up. Come to center. We'll just do the other side. So left fingertip to shoulder, right hand to left knee. And start to circle the elbow, really exploring the movement from the shoulder blade all the way through the arm. As you come forward, you can squeeze the elbow in. And as you exhale, really squeeze the shoulder blades together. Feel the chest open as you come into the twist. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And switch both arms up overhead, inhale. And exhale, take hands to knees. We're just gonna walk forward. So crawl your hands forward. I'll move back so you can see. Just in a forward fold here. I like to press my hands into the mat so that the hips go back. And you can really feel this in like the lower back, right? It's subtle, but I'm pressing my hips back and then maybe taking a little shift from side to side. Or just little micro movements to explore how this asana is showing up in your body today. And if there's areas of tightness or tension, maybe you can get them to release and let go by softening into your breath. 
inhale exhale one inhale exhale two inhale exhale three <clears throat> coming back up to sit so let's extend the right leg out to the side have your left knee bent and here I'll, I'll mirror you so we'll be on the same side we're gonna bring your right hand to the mat you could also use a block here and the left arm is going to come up and over you can bring it to behind your head you can rest the forearm with the elbow on the block or the mat or any prop here and you want to kind of feel like you're leaning back right kind of like we just did bringing the elbow back squeezing the the shoulder blades together it's almost like a little bit of a back bend and then at the same time try to press your left hip down to the floor so there's this container for the stretch a sense of grounding so that you can lengthen in the spine and in the side body breathing in and out for one inhale exhale two inhale exhale three Great. rise back up straight spine feel what it's like to release that we'll just move to the other side this time straighten the left leg bend the right knee maybe move your prop over if you're using a prop left hand comes to the inside of the leg right arm reaches up and so from that length same as twisting you elongate and then you move into the shape find your depth here just the right amount of stretch you can always explore but move in slowly so that way you know where your edge is without going too far breathing in and out for one inhale exhale two inhale exhale three and slowly make your way back up straight spot Upavishta Konasana legs are in in a V you know comfortable V again if you need to elevate your seat at all you don't want to have the tailbone tucked under because that causes some rounding in the spine you might even move the flush away or elevate your seat so you can get this forward tilt in your pelvis Sometimes um, bending the knees as well can relieve the, the tension in the back of the legs. And we're gonna fold forward. You might be able to just go for it, or you might want to lay like um, um, some blocks or you can kind of make like a makeshift bolster here by stacking my blanket over the blocks, or you, know, you could lay on a pillow. You can always get rid of these props as you um, Feel your body opening up or you can add more props if you feel like it's getting too intense or overwhelming and as we're here can you practice compassion breathe from your heart center which is the place of compassion and let the breath flow through your whole body as you breathe and this can be a very intense pose so can you create that place of peace and calm even when the outside is more intense, more triggering? Let that compassion flow through your heart, through your whole body. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Great, slowly come up. And you can just take a little lean back, a little shake out of your legs, bending the knees. Maybe move your props out of the way. Um, and a nice way to release is 
have the feet on the ground um, a little bit wider, not too close together, so that you can rock your knees from side to side, feeling the internal, external rotation of the thighs. It's almost like a nice massage for the hips. Okay. We're gonna come into Virasana. Um, I'll just show it from the side first so you can see. Um, this could be very intense to be just sitting on the heels. So you could grab a block and place the block in between the ankles. You could always raise the block up or even add another block. Um, so that you're sitting straight. You don't want to be you know, leaning forward. You want the spine to be straight here. This is gonna be a nice stretch for the ankles and the shins. And then reach the arms out to the side. And sweep the right arm underneath the left. So you can either give yourself a hug or take eagle arms by bringing the back of the palms together or maybe even going for that double bind. Draw the shoulders down, lift the elbows up, and then we'll circle the elbows. So we're just kind of freeing up the shoulders and the upper back as you do this. Finding your range of movement here. You don't have to worry too much about what it looks like. You're just kind of trying to find some fluidity in the place that's generally tight on a lot of people. Make sure you're moving with your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Change directions, go the other way. So exploring that circular movement. A few more deep breaths here. Maybe starting to create some heat and warmth. And then just come back to center. Relax the shoulders down, lift the elbows up, breathe in out for one. Try to relax the face and jaw. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Okay, reach the arms back out to the side. Inhale. This time across the left arm underneath the right. And you can come into that eagle arms or option to hug yourself. And draw the shoulder blades down, lift the elbows up, start to circle the elbows. Nice, circling in this direction for five, four, three, two. Change directions, other way, circling for five, four, three, two. One. And then come back to center, shoulders down, elbows up, breathing in, and out for one. Inhale, exhale two, inhale, exhale three, release your arms and reach up overhead, take a full breath in, exhale arms out to the side. And then reach your fingertips back behind you. So you're opening up through the chest. Keep reaching the fingertips back. And you can feel the stretch in your arms. Breathing in. And out for one. Keep reaching. Inhale. Exhale. Two front body opening. Inhale. Exhale. Release the hands down. Great. Come off the block. If you're sitting on it, you can place it to the side, come on to hands and knees. So all fours, tabletop position. Curl the toes under, and we'll arch the back. So opening up front body, chest, chin, lift, the belly drops down, the tail lifts. Rounding, tail tucks under, or open up the back body. Press the ground away, shoulder blades spreading. We'll start to move with the breath. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Take it at your own pace. Inhale to arch. Exhale to round. And then if you like, move intuitively. Maybe 
moving the shoulder to the ribs, the head. It's really up to you. Every body is different and every day is different. So you can kind of tune into what's true for you right now. Places that are tight or tense or maybe noticing the places that feel really good, expansive and free. Breathing in and out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Tabletop position. You can bring your knees together so they're touching. Curl your toes under. This is a great stretch for the feet. You might even reach back to make sure all 10 toes, like the pinky toes and everything are tucked under. And then if you can, try to sit back on your heels, stacking the shoulders over the hips. If this is really intense, you can always um, lift the hips up and come back down. But we're looking to spread the toes and open up the connected tissue that runs really up the whole posterior chain of the body, starting with the soles of the feet. So, a lot of the hands to rest at knees looks really good, everyone. Shoulder blades down the back. Breathing in. And out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Slowly you can come out and just give the tops of the feet a little tap here love. So grab your blocks. You could um, also use maybe a blanket or cushion here. And we're going to add my blocks on the medium setting so you can always kind of adjust the height as you need to. We're going to come into a, another shoulder stretch, opening up the heart again, bringing the elbows down to the blocks. Hands come into prayer. So this is a variation of puppy pose, which means the hips stay lifted. My knees are underneath the hips. So you might even need to like walk your knees back a little bit. And then you have the space to melt the heart towards the floor. So you're releasing that chest space. You can release your head as well. And every time we open up the front body, you're also contracting the back body. You can feel that here with the shoulder blades coming together as the heart peeks through. Breathing in and out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Take your time coming out. You may need to walk your knees a little closer in. Use your hands. And if you want to do a little cat and cow or some movement here, just to release and let that go. Place the props to the side and we'll lay down into sphinx pose. So the elbows and the forearms are going to be on the mat. Draw the shoulder blades back and down. And to do that, you can use your hands. It's almost as if you're gripping the mat and kind of pulling your heart forward. And then at the same time, spreading the forearms out to the side. So you get that widening across the front body as you press out. There's a feeling of your feet kind of hugging in towards each other. You don't necessarily have to touch, but the legs hug in towards the midline and the pubic bone presses down, like lengthens the lower back. You can come into a deeper back bend by coming um, onto the hands and lifting the elbows up. So you can play here, coming through Sphinx pose or into any level of your Cobra pose. Breathing in and out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Meet up in Sphinx Pose. 
and on your left forearm, bend your right knee, reach back and grab your right foot or right ankle. And if uh, it's too far away, you could also use that strap or your tie. You know, draw the right heel in towards your glute. And then as you do that, try to press your right hip down to the floor. It's gonna wanna lift. Press that right hip down, draw the right heel in. And then you can start to turn your shoulders to the top of the mat. Maybe even flip the fingertips if the shoulders are open enough. Try not to collapse into the left shoulder, so keep lifting up there. And if there's anyone that wants a little bit more, you can press into your left hand and lift up a little bit more into that back bend, which is the seal pose. Breathing in and out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Okay, let that go. We'll move to the other side. So you'll be on your right forearm, lifting up, bending the left knee, reaching back with the left hand for the foot, or using your strap. Pulling the heel in towards your glute. And you don't want your knee to go out to the side. You do want your knee to be hugging in towards the midline so that you can press your left hip down to the floor. As the heel comes in, there's also this feeling of pressing the top of the thigh into the floor and dragging it forward. And that'll increase the, the front of the body stretch. And if you did it on the other side, you might want to lift up off of that right elbow and into the seal pose. Wherever you're at, softening into it with your breath with compassion. Breathing in. And out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Let that go. Going back into the Sphinx and let the elbows go wide. Resting your head down. Bend your knees and just windshield wiper the feet from side to side. Okay. Coming up onto the forearms again. We'll do uh, one last variation here. You can always stay with that quad opening that we just did. Um, this is also a really nice kind of build upon that. So bending the right knee, we're gonna go into half bow pose. So you're gonna reach back with the right hand for the foot and begin to kick the foot into your hand. Okay, trying to find some symmetry here to square off the shoulders. You can use your left hand to help to lift the chest up. And I also like to lift the left leg up off the mat because that really helps to engage the glutes and the back body. So the back body's contracting to open up the front body. So you get that strengthening and stretching here. Breathing in. And out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Release. Let's just come down for a moment. Take a full breath in. And a long breath out. Other side. So lift up onto the right forearm, bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand for the foot. There's an action of kicking the foot up and back that opens up the shoulder and the chest. And you can lift that right leg as well. Breathing in. And out for one. Steady Ujjayi Pranayam. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. And gently release. Lower down. Take a full breath in. And a long breath out. Slide the hands underneath your shoulders. Press up into a tabletop position. So you're on hands and knees. We'll do a wide knee child's pose, big toes together. 
knees widen, send the hips all the way back towards your heels. So you're lengthening the tailbone towards the back of the mat. And we'll do a little twist with the upper body, threading the right arm underneath the left armpit and resting the right side of your head on the mat. You could also put a block or a towel underneath your head if you need a little support here. Those of us that want a little extra could bind the left arm behind your back and kind of tuck it in around the right thigh. So trying to slow down your breath here, making it a source of meditation and focus. The breath is happening right here, right now. So when you focus on your breath, you can be present. It's like an anchor into the present moment for your mind that's always kind of working naturally. It's supposed to work. Thinking, projecting, ruminating. Letting all the thoughts float away like little thought bubbles and coming back to your breath. Back through center, that child's pose. Well, over to the other side, so curl the uh, left fingertips underneath the right armpit. Option to bind the arm if you like. And find that steadiness. How the breath easily flows. The winds of grace in our life in and out. You don't have to force it or try too hard naturally wants to show up for you and you're just here to put yourself into the flow and back through center and we'll come back up to sit Bring your knees together, we'll come back into Virasana. Okay, so if possible, see if you can do it without a prop. If not, you can um, always put a, a blanket, a folded blanket or a block underneath your seat, but we are gonna um, recline a bit here. So you can either stay sitting on the heels or you can sit down in between the heels. And that does require a little bit um, deeper flexion of the ankle. We're gonna walk the hands back. And as you do that, you can lift your seat up, tuck your tailbone under, and then lower your seat back down. So you're taking that kind of intense curve out of the lower back. Staying here is just fine, or you could lower down to the forearms. And then you're really feeling this front body opening. Next few breaths into the belly, deep diaphragmic breathing. If there's anyone that wants to lay all the way down, that is an option as well. We're all um, at different points in a progression of these poses. So, for the next three breaths, be where you are, and come into that place of presence. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Piece by piece, you can support onto your forearms and then your hands. Coming back up into your asana and then into a tabletop position, extending the right leg back behind you. Pulse the right heel towards the back of the mat. stretch in the back of the leg. Seal the right heel down. I'm going to turn towards the long edge of the mat and come up into a gate pose. So if you have to readjust that left knee, you want to feel grounded here and tall in the spine. Inhale, the arms reach out and up. 
Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach out and up. Really fill up the whole inhale. Little pause at the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more time like that. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, empty out the breath as the hands come to heart. Bring the right hand to the right leg, the extended leg, and the left arm reaches up. Grow tall, inhale. You're gonna side bend towards the extended leg. Lengthening that left side body, breathing in. And now for one. Inhale. Exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, and back up. And you can reach both arms up overhead. Breathe in, hands to heart center, breathe out. Bring your left hand down to the mat so it's outside of the left hip. And then reach your right arm up. Circle the right arm, nice big circles, breathing in and breathing out. Change direction, circle the other leg. And then reach the right arm to the top of the mat. You can stay here or move your right foot slightly behind you. And you can move into this kind of stargazer pose where you open up the chest towards the ceiling and it's like a little back bend. Really good. Take a deep breath. Circle the right hand down to the mat. Come back into table, both knees on the floor. Extend the left leg back behind you, toes curled under, pulsing the left heel to the back of the mat. Seal left heel down. You're gonna turn to the long edge of the mat, come to stand on your right knee. So Parigasana, gate pose. Position the legs so you feel steady here for some heart chakra breaths. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands, heart center. Movement and breath together. Inhale, reach up. Fill to the top of the inhale. Exhale, draw it towards your heart. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, hands to heart. Left hand on left thigh, right arm up, breathe in. Side bend on the left as you breathe out, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three, rise back up, reach both arms up. As you exhale, hands to heart center. Bring your right hand to the mat outside of the right hip and reach the left arm up. Start to circle the left arm. Change directions, circle the other way. Left arm reaches up to the sky. And an option to move into that little back bend. So you move the left leg behind you for stability so that you can lean back here, roll the chest open, and bring the shoulder blades together, rolling that left shoulder open. Stargazer, full breath in, long breath out. Just circling the left arm around as you come back into tabletop position. We're gonna move into a pigeon pose. So you might want to have a blanket nearby if you need some props underneath your hip. We'll start by bringing the right knee forward, left leg extended straight back behind you. So you can even curl the back toes under to find that leg straight back. If you find that uh, your right hip is not on the floor and you're kind of leaning to the right, you can prop yourself up with a little bit of blanket, depending on how high you're lifted. If you don't want to over prop, then go to the other side. 
but just the right amount for you. Your practice is customized just for you. And then slowly lower down. If there's any kind of pain in the knee or the ankle, you can also do this um, stretch on your back. It should hurt good. If you want to rest your head on a, a block or a blanket or maybe make a little pillow with your hands. And there can be some gentle movement here, maybe rocking from side to side or a little circling of the hips. With every inhale, you can imagine making more space in those tight places. And then on every exhale, a little more release and letting go. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Now, if you're loving this pigeon, you can of course stay there or we'll have a slight variation coming onto the forearms. And then it's a little bit of a twist. So left hand or right hand comes to the right thigh and you can um, twist to the right. And it kind of, as you do that, you're rolling that right thigh out externally. So that might help with the alignment of the pose. Um, and this in itself, the twist can kind of deepen the sensation. If there's anyone that wants to add on to the quad stretch, bend the back knee, reach back with your right hand for the left foot. And again, you can use a strap here. And there's an oscillation of sensations. You can kick the foot into your hand. That's going to open up the shoulder and increase that back bend. Or you can pull the heel in towards your glute. That's going to open up the front of the thigh, the hip flexor. And you might go between those things with your breath, inhaling and exhaling, kicking and pulling. Try to make it. Take your time letting that go. We're going to make our way back into a tabletop position. Notice how it feels to release. It's kind of like an afterglow in the poses. You might want some movement. And then we'll switch to the other side. Different experience, different hip. Left knee comes forward, right leg extends straight back behind you. Customize your props, customize your pose for you. Especially the hips, if you've been doing like a lot of exercise that could be really tight or on some days they might be really open and ready to go so and practicing compassion in each moment slowly lowering down when you're ready so you want to find your edge and then once you're at that edge that perfect place for you Feel a release. And imagine the body flooding with fresh oxygen every time you draw breath in. Filling up with compassion and light. And every time you exhale, releasing negativity, bad thoughts, judgments. This full detoxification with your breath. Inhale. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale two. Inhale. Exhale three. Feel free stay here or come up onto the forearms and we'll do that little twist. So it's the left hand to left thigh. So I'm kind of leaning back onto this right forearm. Yeah, you have to kind of lean back in order to roll the shoulder open. And I'm also using this left hand to externally rotate that left thigh. So kind of making more space in the hip joint. 
And if you want, you can reach back and grab the right foot, bending the right knee. Kicking the foot into the hand, opening up the shoulder and the chest, breathe in. Draw the heel in towards your glute. Stretch the front of the thigh as you breathe out. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Gently releasing, way back go. Make your way back into table. And once you're in tabletop position, bring your knees together and circle the hips. Some juicy hip circles. You can start with small circles. Whenever they get really big, you can come all the way forward towards like a modified up dog and back towards child's pose. When you're ready, change, go the other direction. Um, and let's use the props here. So you could use either a blank, a folded blanket or a block. And place the prop on the outside of your left hip. And then take the other prop, the rolled up blanket or a block, and place it in between your thighs. Reach your arms out to the side. Lift the hips and move them over to the right slightly and put the hips back down. Lift the knees up. Use your core to let the knees fall over to the left. And slowly, gently let the knees fall onto the support of the prop there, the blanket or the block. So here's where the stretch comes in. Start to move your right knee away from you so that it's more in line with the left knee. Try to press your right shoulder down towards the floor. Head and neck are comfortable. And you're breathing into the diaphragm. Inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Use your abdominals to lift the knees back up and place the feet on the ground. Come back to a neutral spine. So even out your hips and then switch your props to the second side. So move the block of the blanket over to the right outside of the right hip, arms out to the side. Use your core to first shift the hips over to the left and then lift the knees with control. Let the knees start to fall towards the right. They hover above the prop for just a moment. And as you gently place the knee, the thigh, onto the support of the prop, begin to move the left knee away from you. The left hip kind of moves away from you. As you press the left shoulder down, you can really feel that cross body twist there. Breathe in. And out for one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. With control, lifting the knees back up, placing feet on the ground, 
You can find it in a neutral spine. You can remove the block from in between your legs, roll onto one side, just supporting your head as you come up to sit. So for our final pose, it's gonna be a passive chest opener. You could either use your blocks or you could use a blanket um, rolled up in a, in a long roll. This is gonna go in between the shoulder blades. So whatever prop you're using, whether it's the block or the blanket, it's gonna be for the upper back. So I'm gonna place this about two thirds of the way up the mat. I'm gonna set up so the center of my shoulder blades are going right onto that prop. Arms out to the side. And you just don't want your head to be dangling. You want your head to feel supported. So if you need another blanket or another block underneath your head, feel free to take that. Legs can be however you want them to be. Um, you can do constructive breast, you could do Baddha Konasana, or just regular Shavasana with the legs extended. This is completing our intention to have compassion while the eyes are closed. First begin by softening the face especially that place in between the eyebrows, the third eye, which is the center for intuition, knowing before you know. And relaxing the throat, center of communication and speech. Relaxing the back of the neck, and letting the head be heavy. softening the heart, and not the physical heart, but the spiritual heart right at the center of the chest, a place of compassion for ourselves and others, and just allowing that compassion to flow through the entire body as you breathe from the heart center. Here's a poem by Dana Folds called Being Present. Breathe, relax, and feel. Take time to slow down the pace of life. Watch the rise and fall of moods, the birth and death of dreams. Feelings and sensations seem so real, yet they shift like changing clouds and flow with the high tide out to sea again. Allow it all to be, no need to grasp or push away. Present with each moment, the whole of you, body, mind, and soul opens to receive. Being present. When you're ready, come back into your body with some gentle movement, bending the knees. To release this, you can roll onto one side. You give yourself a moment in that fetal position and supporting your head as you come up to a seated position. And once you're seated, Allowing the eyes to close again and bringing palms together over the heart. Feeling in for your own heartbeat. So you have this internal rhythm and pulse that is always there for you. Just like your breath. You can always bring your attention back here. The heartbeat and the breath grounding you in the present moment. to seal our dedicated practice today towards this heartfelt sense of compassion. 
we'll open our hearts to the resounding sound of all. Start by taking a deep breath in. Open the mouth and sigh. Inhale for all. 